Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Dixon. I'm a massage therapist and a postural alignment therapist and a health coach on Nantucket Island. And um, <clears throat> today's class is going to have an element of posture in it, but it's going to be uh, focused on different remedies that you can have for seasonal wellness or seasonal allergies. Um, and this is not to take the, this is not, you know, if you have allergies, if you have issues, of course, talk to your doctor. And what we're going to be discussing today is multiple low level environmental allergies. It would be helpful if you have high level environmental allergies as well. But <clears throat> um, let me start by telling you a little bit about my experience with allergies. So amongst other things, um, for years, I would get this three month cold. Um, that was pretty bad all spring and all and all fall. And I thought that I had allergies and I went to the allergist and he did, he did testing for me. He did scratch testing, which I now know is checking high level allergies, not low level allergies. I should also say I felt unwell a lot um, of the time, particularly in this time. And I would go to the doctor and they would, they would check to see if I had you know, limes. They would check to see if I was even um, fighting a cold or a virus or something. They would check my white blood cell count and I wasn't and I would get these three, mo uh, three month long colds that never really went away and I thought that I had allergies. Then I went to this allergist and he did all this scratch testing on me, which was um, uncomfortable and um, the histamine one was uncomfortable. And what he determined was that I had no allergies. And I thought, wow, what are these three month long things I have in the spring and the fall? And then I was following up with an issue after the fall, I was getting a lot of nerve pain on one side. Um, and I just had to, I knew something was wrong. It turns out that I'd had a root canal up into a sinus and then it would get aggravated in the fall and it had amplified. Um, and, you know, they determined that I had a bad root canal, but they thought I had another issue and they sent me to an ENT. Um, it was Dr. Caldwell for those on Nantucket. And I went to Dr. Caldwell and he looked at my nose and he said, or he looked up my nose and he said, oh, you don't have an issue in your sinus, but you have allergies. And I said, oh, well, you know, I went to an allergist and he said I didn't have allergies. And he says, well, I'm an allergist too. And I tell you, you have allergies. So he explained to me and the nurses in their allergy department explained to me that it used to be that people who had the high level allergies were the ones that they thought had a big impact. What they have found is that multiple low allergies will have an accumulative effect that will be similar to a higher load of allergies. So if you maybe had one or two little low allergies, it wasn't a big deal, but the more allergies, things that you were allergic to as the load got higher, um, you would have more of an impact. Now, it turns out I was allergic to all the animals that we had in our house, including our dog, our rabbit, and the guinea pigs. Um, and I was allergic to dust, but I was also allergic to everything that bloomed in the spring and the fall. So I had this low level, lower level in the summer and the winter, but in the spring and the fall when everything bloomed, things really got high, my load got overloaded, and I would get unwell and with, with lots of allergies. In the testing, um, uh, you know, what they do for the, for the lower level testing is they do the scratch testing first to make sure you don't have a high allergy to something. And it turns out I had a high allergy to my rabbit or to, to my daughter's rabbit. And then they, t they do these little injections into you to see if you have a low level allergy. And then they create a, um, an allergy serum. So all of the things, so all of the information that I'm going to give you today are going to be how I lessened my load using both what the doctor recommended what um, I learned that works practically, 
and also um, a postural sequence that really is going to help improve your sinuses to drain. So it's not specifically to allergies, but one thing that happens with allergies is that you create swelling and, you, and the swelling stops the drainage from being ideal. Your sinuses are supposed to drain naturally. And to have your head aligned properly over the neck, which might be an issue to all of us who don't have allergies as well, it could be really useful. So one thing that's helpful is to know what you're allergic to so that you can cut down your load appropriately. When I was going through it, um, in looking back, I can see what I was allergic to, but the rabbit had gone from my daughter's room, which was closed off much of the time, to the center of the house. And this was already when I knew I supposedly had allergies, but I had not gotten them tested yet. And the rabbit moved into the middle of the house and within a couple of hours i felt like i had been hit with a massive cold and i recognized that the rabbit must be an allergy and it was it was a higher allergy to me so in getting all the testing it turns out i was allergic to my dog and my dog was i was not willing to get rid of the rabbit we moved outside and we only found a new home for him when we couldn't keep her safely outside. It was attracting too many rats, unfortunately. And the guinea pigs had to move into the basement. Like we made different choices of lowering our loads. One thing that the allergist had talked to me about was um, that lessening your load in your bedroom was the most important place. Your bedroom was where you spent about a third of your day and it was where you rested and rejuvenated. So the most important place to cut down on your allergy load is your bedroom. For us, that included getting, having the dog not sleep with me anymore because I was allergic to dust. Um, I, I have a list, hopefully everyone got the little PDF, but on the PDF were all the recommendations that really came from um, the allergist's office. And it was um, make your be bedroom an allergy-free zone, no zone for animals if you're allergic to them, remove the bedding, uh, remove down bedding in place with allergy-free material and cover things, um, HEPA filters, and removing anything extra that could encourage dust and mold, including bookcases or carpeting. Now, I do have carpeting in my bedroom, but it's new. Having your bedroom an allergy-free zone makes a really big difference. And then reducing the load in the rest of your house. So air filters, I especially like the molecule. Um, it kills viruses and bacteria, I believe as well. But I, um, the room where my dog spent the most time in, I was still having more problems. I wouldn't say I had problems breathing. I recognized that I was having a higher allergy load in that room. And so, um, on the uh, pamphlet that I had was a lot of the things that worked really effectively for me to reduce my load. And everyone that I have made the re um, recommendations that have also done it, it's made a really, really big difference for them as well. So anyone has any questions on any of that, please feel free to contact me. My email is in the, um, is at the bottom of the, the PDF and I'm happy to talk to anyone about it. Um, the other thing that made a really big difference is, in general, for both allergies and not allergies, is reducing the number of non of fragrances in your house. And so these would be um, not necessarily essential oils. I'm going to talk about a couple of essential oils that really made a big difference for me, but for me, it was the dryer sheets. So anytime I would open up the dryer after the dryer sheets had been in there, I would get this feeling that I recognized was an allergy load. And fragrances, according to um, the EWG, they say that fragrance formulas are considered to be among the top five known allergens and can trigger asthma attacks. The top guilty are fragrances and cleaning products, scented candles, dryer sheets, dishwasher detergent, and air fresheners. Um, so just something to think about when you, um, when you go to, um, so there's two sources that I listed in the pamphlet that talk about different places that you could go to to look and see how your products are rated. So they're going to rate them for 
cancer, they're going to rate them for uh, fragrance. And in general, fragrance, if something is listed as a fragrance, it is able to be sort of eliminated from whether it is safe or not. Um, it's, it's considered like cosmetic as opposed to having an actual issue with people. So a lot of things can be put in that aren't really deemed safe, um, that might not be safe. One thing about the Think Dirty app, which is free, and it rates your products, is it has to have a product that's already rated. Um, but also that some of the products in it might not be bad, but because it's a fragrance, they consider it bad. So do take that with a little bit of consideration. Different, say, essential oils are different quality. A very poor quality orange oil would still make a probably healthier cleaning product than a, you know, some other chemical that's known to create, you know, car, you know, carcinogens and cancer. But Think Dirty App might still say, oh, that's a fragrance and there's a lot of it in it, so it must not be safe. So it's always good to take it with a little bit of consideration. And I always like to think about how much I like that product versus is another product going to be really effective for me? Um, for example, you know, I like shampoos that work for me and conditioners and trying to go to a very, very healthy one really kind of like ruined my hair. And I decided I would rather wear real deodorant and really shampoo and conditioner, but I would cut down on my fragrance in my uh, dryer sheets. And so now I use a dryer sheet that is a healthier alternative. It doesn't have any fragrance in it and it is healthier on the, the, the chemical element of things. So with anything, it's always good to sort of balance different things. Um, I use a lot of essential oils. So I sort of had traded out the products that had unnatural fragrances to things that were more natural um, at times, but the essential oils of peppermint, lemon, and lavender can be incredibly useful in helping people with allergies or seasonal wellness. And I mostly put them on this little stick that has inside this, I have my dog, so I'm just gonna show you. Inside is a little stick and uh, the oil gets dropped in on the stick. And then there's these little holes that I can breathe it in. And um, I just am able to breathe it in and it's been incredibly useful, particularly this um, right now. It's never nice to sneeze or cough or have you know, things going on. Right now, people look at you like, oh my gosh, you're gonna kill me if you're sneezing and coughing and things like that. So it's really useful to have these. It's interesting because the peppermint is stimulating. And when you have swelling in your nasal passages, it's incredibly useful to have a little bit of stimulation into that area. It tends to vasodilate a little bit, which opens up the passages a little bit but the lavender is calming for the irritation that you have in there. And the lemon is also stimulating um, and it's bright and it smells nice. So it's a lovely combination. In the PDF that I had, I listed different ways that you could use essential oils. And there's other oils that could work for allergies for sure. Um, but the, the in, this is an inhaler stick that's listed and it's incredibly useful for on the go or whenever I want to use them, etc. cetera. Um, another way that can be useful is that I will sometimes take like lavender oil. I wouldn't use lemon on my skin, but I'll just put a smear right here on my chest and lavender oil you can use neat and it's gonna sort of waft up to my nose. And so it can be really nice to be able to use on a uh, regular basis if I'm feeling my allergies kick up or stress or whatever. But when I have my allergies, it can be really useful. I do list other ways that you could use essential oils in general. Um, another essential oil that I didn't list that can be useful is cedarwood. Anyone have any questions so far that they wanna ask? So in addition to getting allergy shots, which I've had to start doing myself, which is interesting. I used to go to the doctor for the allergy shots. An interesting thing about allergy shots is 
even the doctors will say, we don't know why the allergy shots work. What is interesting is, is they take, they find out what you're allergic to. They create a serum that is based on very small amounts of everything you are allergic to, and then they inject it into you. And what they think it works with is they are getting your body used to low levels of this so you build up a tolerance to it. And then each time you've gone through a different bottle of the serum, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and you're getting more of a result. I will have, wherever I've injected myself with it, I will get a bit of a reddish patch. Overall, though, I would say it's dramatically improved how I feel with, with the allergies. So I really look at that patch and I'm like, wow, I'm feeling so much better, you know? But... It is interesting that um, it follows more of a holistic, um, give me a second, what is it? Um, it follows uh, more like, I'm dropping what they're called right now. You can get them at the health food store. Um, uh, ah, I'm totally dropping what they are. It, it, it is a much more holistic approach to dealing with health than actually a lot of time Western medicine has. So that, that's interesting. Other things that can really help is local honey. So if you are allergic to things that are growing right now, honey is almost like a natural way of, it does soothe your throat, um, but it also will give you a little bit of what's naturally growing in your area and be a little tiny bit similar to that um, allergy shot element of um, introducing your body to slight amounts of things that you are um, having a problem with. Flonase is now over the counter. It used to be a prescription um, and it's not anymore. The issue with it not being a prescription is it costs more money now. It used to cost me like $1.50 to get it. And now it's closer to $20, I wanna say. Um, but it's a, it's a steroid. Um, if your allergies, if your doctor thinks it's good for you to have. Um, it's just over the counter. You can get it at Stop and Shop. You can get it at the pharmacy. Um, but it's a steroid that you go in and it will cut down the swelling that you have in that area. Um, that can be really helpful if your nose gets stuffy and you have allergy stuff. The negative thing that I've seen, um, the nice thing also is that even though it's a steroid, it's only going to your nose. So if you were to take steroids orally for like a skin condition, it's going to hit your gastrointestinal, it's gonna hit your entire body. This is the steroids that's just sticking to your nose, which can be helpful. Like any steroid, it can make you bleed more though. And I've had, if you're already on blood thinners, you, could, you should talk to your doctor before you go on this. Um, and also, um, People that use it really, really regularly, sometimes after a long time, they will have a funky nosebleed that they have trouble explaining that probably is coming from a lot of a steroid use. So just know if you're using it, I don't think that you should not have to use it, but just know that if you started having nosebleeds, it might be caused from this and you would certainly want to consider going off of this until you discussed whether or not you should go back on. So, um, but I've only had like, I've used these for years and I've only had one or two not so bad nosebleeds. And if I got a little bit of a nosebleed, I would stop doing it for a little bit of a while. But for me, because I breathe in so many of the allergens and I have a problem in this area, it makes a really big difference for me to cut down the swelling in here and it helps me breathe better. Another thing that when I first started using it, um, my doctor did not recommend it. So before I knew I had allergies, I knew I had an issue with a post-nasal drip, but I didn't know the post-nasal drip was due to allergies. So <clears throat> someone had recommended to me this Neil Med sinus rinse. And uh, you're supposed to use distilled water. I just happen to use warm Nantucket water. Um, and you get, they, they have little packets that you put it in and it's like, it's a type of a neti pot, but instead of using a pot that you have to do, you just lean over and you squeeze the water and the water goes up one side and comes down the other. 
and then it goes on to the other side. This has made a dramatic, dramatic uh, difference in my overall sinus sinuses. Some stories I have with it is I hadn't recognized how much of a constant post nasal drip cough that I always had. Um, and my clients noticed that after I had started using this, they said, you know, Rachel, you aren't constantly clearing your throat and stuff. Um, for me personally, I can feel how swollen my sinuses are. What they think it works is, is if I'm breathing in different allergens, I'm flushing them out. There was one time also that I was away and I was getting a sinus infection and I could, I, I was away at a class and I was trying to figure out if I had to stop the class and go to an ER and get something, but I was in Boston and <clears throat> it was just a pain. And I was actually able to get a lot of junk out with this thing, which really let, then let my sinuses drain and I was fine after that. Um, but it can make a really big difference to use some sort of a lavage. When I first started using that, uh, that my ENT had said, we're not sure whether we like that or not. We like the Flonase, but we really aren't sure about this. The last couple of times I've gone to his office, he has like a hundred of these that he must hand out to everyone. So, um, of course, it's always good to uh, check things out. The packets make the water much more comfortable. You wouldn't, if you just used water, it would sting. If you have the water at the right temperature and you have the packet in it, it makes it kind of neutral. I feel like it not only takes out the allergens, but it allows me to, um, it allows me to, uh, I feel like it helps with the swelling a little bit. I can feel how much swelling I have in there when I do it. Okay. Then also, um, I use another product and it has enzymes in it. Um, that can be really helpful. But <clears throat> posture can make a difference as well. So posture is not going to make a difference in whether or not you have an environmental allergy load. It is going to help your sinuses drain better. Um, sinuses create a lot of liquid and they're meant to drain in a particular way <clears throat> and particularly when your head moves forward, things get stuck and then things dry up and then things aren't working the way that they're meant to. Me, when I was sick in Boston and I got junk out that was keeping my sinuses from draining properly, that is what made me better. It was getting rid of that stuff that allowed my sinuses to drain properly. So one thing posture-wise that can have a problem with allergies is if the head is too forward. Now, we've had several different videos where we've talked about uh, forward head posture and the different ways that it creates a problem. And today I'm going to come up with a couple of uh, different, different ways that you could work with improving the alignment of the head over the body that might help with um, your overall sinuses draining better. So I'm going to put my dog down and I'm going to show you what they were. They are, I've listed what they are. But one issue with it is that, um, you know, this was from what Pete Agoscu had done and he mixed like two together for each of these. So it's great, you actually can get more. So in this one, it's like the sitting knee squeeze. So I'm going to put a pillow between my knees, okay? I'm going to sit up on my sit bones and I'm going to be squeezing and releasing my pillow. My feet are facing forward. Um, ideally, this pillow would have probably been a little bit wider than this, but I'm going to squeeze and release equally. And at the same time, I'm going to correct, you can't really see my upper body right now, but my upper body, if it was forward, okay, I'm gonna take my arms, and, I, and this is hard for me because I spend so much time with my arms forward, but I'm going to bring my arms back like this, or, let me show you right here, or you could bring your elbows back like this. So my shoulders are now stacked more properly over my upper body. And while I'm sitting up, squeezing and releasing and having my shoulders in the proper position, I'm going to squeeze and release. So I'm actually working on my upper body alignment 
while I am asking my pelvis to load better. Ironically, the squeezing and releasing of both of these at the same time is working on pelvic alignment while I'm asking my upper body to be in the correct position. And it actually gets easier for my upper body as I do this. Then we're going to stack up the rest of the body together better. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And this one, we're gonna be on all fours, but I'm gonna take this pillow and I'm gonna put it between my ankles, okay? So now I'm gonna have feet on all fours and my elbows are sort of straight and my knee are straight. Now I'm gonna move my hands about six inches forward and then I'm gonna bring my shoulders over my wrists so that I'm now square, but I am now, my hips are slightly in front of my knees. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to allow my whole back to extend. So now I'm going to sort of sink in there and I've got a curve into my back. I'm going to let my neck drop and I'm going to, in this position, I'm going to squeeze and release between the pillow. And this actually gets a different set of muscles than squeezing and releasing between the knees. This is not actually getting a lower leg. This is actually getting a muscles around my hip. Okay. So that is one posture that if you look up, I think I had the link, but if I didn't have the link, you could just look up Egoscue um, sinuses and you will find Pete explaining why it was helpful. Um, but it was helpful because someone's head was more forward and their sinuses weren't draining. So it could potentially help with your allergies or your overall sinus health by having a head that is aligned properly over the body so the sinuses work the way they are meant to work. So anyone have any questions about either what I explained about reducing the load, what I explained about adding in, or the different posture stuff? Do you have any questions, Amy? Okay, if anyone has any questions and it comes up afterwards, I do have my email um, or my phone and you can always um, call me with that. Um, yeah, and next week, I think we're gonna be working on gait and I'm gonna add some ankle strength into the gait as well. Because some people had specifically wanted that. Can you Someone hear have me? A question? Yep. Um, you talked about lavender before. I didn't know how to unmute myself. Are you seeing me? I don't know. I don't see you, no. Oh, they don't show the picture? Oh, okay. Um, I was questioning lavender when you said it. What about lavender outside in your garden? Could you roll it and then breathe it in? Or would oh, that yeah, that could be helpful. Um, it's So the essential oils are taken from a lavender plant. And there's different lavender, there's different lavender plants, but in general, smelling them will be helpful. Um, it might not be as concentrated as using another one. Um, what what you might even want to do is more if you have peppermint in your garden, I would probably make like a peppermint tea, you know, okay. or crush the peppermint in my hands, and then sniff it. That could be helpful. But I think there's like probably ten pounds of of peppermint in like one little tiny bottle. So, you know, anytime you use, um, anytime you use an herb, um, it's going to be less concentrated than like an essential oil, which is going to be more concentrated. Um, but it's, it's also in general, herbs are going to be, um, there's, there's positives in the list, but, but probably like having a peppermint might be more helpful and crushing it and smelling it or doing the same with lavender could be helpful, but it's not going to be as concentrated as the essential oils. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah.